Welcome back to Through the Woods 360, guys. As you can see, today we're not in the woods, but some things are just a little easier to do at home. Yeah, and there's always things that you would rather do at home to get ready to go. And I think I told you guys, or maybe, maybe I didn't, but we try to can as much stuff as we can. And along with that, we usually make jelly. And that's usually grape jelly. But this year, we're not only making, we're going to bring you along here with us when we make one batch of grape jelly, but we're also going to make blackberry syrup. Since we talked about it in the blackberry cobbler recipe, and I said about how you could drain those blackberries and make syrup with that, right. we're going to go ahead while we've got everything going and cold can and cold packers going, and we're going to make up a batch of blackberry syrup. So stick around with us, and we'll show you how we do it. Okay, you can see our blackberries in this pot. We have... Uh, between seven and eight cups they were frozen blackberries when we put them in there so I always put a little extra in there because you know they don't if they're fresh or frozen because they don't take up the space like if I measured them now you would have less than that so I always throw a little in extra because we need to have um, I think it's two and a half two and a half to three three cups would be better of juice out of this to make our blackberry syrup so that's why I throw some extra in you can always have extra you don't want less so we're going to go ahead and we're going to turn this on to a medium high flame and what we need to do and i rec recommend always i mean there's a lot of juice gino can you see that in there yeah I can there's there's quite a bit of juice to... that's in here oh, yeah. now if you started with fresh berries you might have to add a little water to them but you know the frozen they release their juice but you, what you want to do is you want to take these and just heat these until they're boiling. So it's going to take a little while because we have to keep stirring it and we can only go on a medium high flame. But after they come to a boil, then we're going to take them and we're going to cook them about, just simmer them, about 15 to 20 minutes. And then after that, we're going to mash them. And then we'll have to show you how we get our juice out of here. But right now, all we're going to do is bring this to a boil and a simmer. And when that's done, we'll go to the next step of mashing and straining. Okay, guys, we're going to bring you back in here just for a second. If you can see how much juice we have in here now compared to what we had earlier, as soon as you start heating these, the juice starts coming out of them since they've been frozen. I actually think this works better from frozen berries. Um, anyway, you already start to get juice. And then we brought it up to a boil, and now we're, we're, now, now we're at the simmer stage. And we've got to let this go for 15 to 20 minutes. But I wanted you to see, there, 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 you get a lot of juice just as, even before it boils. So we're gonna let this simmer here. We probably got a, oh, another 10 minutes or so to go. But I, but I just wanted to show you that there, you don't have to add water if you're using frozen berries, because there's, a, there will be a lot of juice there as soon as you introduce them to heat. I'll tell you what, I don't know if I can. I don't know if I can stand another 10 minutes of smell. It's killing it me. It does smell good. <laughs> and we are going to flip-flop around back and forth between the grape and the, the grape. I've already done this stage with the grape. And we have five cups of grape juice here. But we'll get into that when we start on, on actually making the jelly. But we're while this cools so we can strain it and get nothing but clear juice out of it, we're going to go ahead and work on getting the grape jelly done and then we'll come back to this after it's cooled and we can strain it without burning ourselves and then we will make the syrup out of the blackberry and then we'll get it in the cold packer okay so we're just about done with our uh 10 to 15 or 15 to 20 minutes i think it was 15 to 20. um but i wanted you to see how much juice there is in here already and then after that we're going to mash it and that's what i want to talk to you about i just I miss my mom. My mom died in 2007. Wow, it's been a long time already. But I found this, when my mom and dad got married, they got a set of kitchen tools and big spoon, slotted spoon, big spoon, potato masher. And this is what it looked like. And I found at a antique store, used store, whatever, sold, sold old Pyrex and stuff like that. I found this potato masher and I had to have it. And if, <laughs> if it ever breaks, I'm going to die because I, I'm going to cry. That, yeah, that you know. daisy pattern on there is I know. so vivid in my so, memories. So I know this syrup is going to turn out a-okay because my mom's here with yep, me. She yeah, sure is. That's right. I take her with me almost everywhere I go. 
Okay, we're ready to mash, huh? Yeah, okay, so come on, Mom, let's go. So we've got this turned <laughs> off now. <laughs> we've got this turned off now, and we are just going to just, I don't know. Hopefully y'all made mashed potatoes. It's not like it's hard and way better than that instant stuff. But this is even easier than mashed potatoes. We're just, because they mash so easy. We're just going to go in here and we're going to try to break these up a little bit further. A little bit more than they are. Because we're going to take these and we're going to take a wire mesh, I guess, strainer. We just always call it a strainer. We're going to take that and we're going to we're going to scoop this mixture into it, let the juice drain out that wants to drain out. And we're going to take that big spoon right there and the big spoon that I was stirring with earlier. I don't know if Gino got a shot no, of it or not. No, I don't, but, but I'll, I'll, I'll give him a shot of it. You'll see the spoon it's, later. It's just a big serving spoon. We're going to take that big spoon. It's actually like a spoon that they used to use years ago, like in... Uh, Mess halls. Yeah, cafeteria, spoon yeah. table, whatever. Um, <laughs> okay, so we have our juice heating up here, and we're going to take one pack of Sure Gel. I've never done it this way before. so Also known a, as pectin. <laughs> yeah, this is a whole new thing. I've always done it the old-fashioned way where you just cooked it until the sugar thickens. So we're going to see if this works quicker. It's supposed to be quicker and better. So we're going to see. So we're going to put this in here. Well, the other thing about it is that if you cook it down, you have, we'll actually have more jelly using this if it works than the because you method. don't Because you don't actually lose your liquid. So we're going to, oh, we got a little on the side there. We're going to get this all stirred in here until it's dissolved. I don't know how I'm supposed to tell when it's dissolved. <laughs> like I said, these newfangled ways, I'm old school, but some people swear by it. My dad swears by it. He said, oh, if you ain't using sure dough, you're working too hard. Well, we're going to see. He might be right. And it's awful hot in this kitchen today. You guys, we are towards the end of September, and it is still 90 degrees outside. And I'll tell you what, that just makes me want to cry because that means <laughs> I'm, I'm serious. Because what that means is we're going to go straight from, from summer into winter. And our nice, awesome fall with our cool days and our chilly nights, there won't be any of that. I will cry we're just a lot go. less about winter than I will about summer. Uh, we're just going straight into winter. Okay, so anyway, I'm pretty sure that sure gel is yeah. out now. So what it costs for is seven cups of sugar. And it says, do not skimp on your sugar. Yes. Before too long, it'll end up looking blue. Then it's just going to look. That's actually really close to a to a Welch's grape jelly color now on that it is. title. It is. Speaking of which, you can actually, if you buy Welch's juice, my dad has done this before. Now, I don't think you could do it without the Sure Gel, um, but he has made grape jelly from, just simply from, Welch's grape juice. Yes, I can attest to that because I helped. Hey, are we waiting for this to foam up now or is that after the sugar? No, no, that you're 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 wanting, to get, you're wanting to get to a rolling boil. I'm just getting to a rolling boil while you're okay. constantly stirring, and then we're going to dump into sugar and okay. bring it back to a rolling boil that can't be stirred down for yes. one minute. Yeah, I don't, you know, like that, and that is uh, the same with any jelly, you know, sure gel or no sure gel, that that you stir it and and keep stirring it, and it it's boiling and the foam it kind of foams, it rolls in on itself, and it just. You'll see here in a little bit, it creates a whole lot of bubbles. And you can't, no matter how much you stir it, you it, it's not going anywhere. But yeah. this is at a boil. We're, we're at a good boil. I can't, I can't quit it from boiling. Believe, so. uh, correct me if I'm mistaken, but the time when we want to skim the foam is right before we jar. Yes. Okay, I'm going to sneak around to your left and give you the rest of the yeah, sugar. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me get this little... This little lump here, you know, kind of, right? Kind of turns like flour when you dump flour in water. It kind of yeah, gets the skin on the outside. Coagulates keeps a, together. Somewhere. Yeah, and keeps the whole. There, now you're now you're good. And keeps the whole podule of it inside. Yeah, I'm gonna try. I don't to even think podule is a word, but just it stir, is. Stir there. It is I'll today. Try to sift. Just dump it in. So just it dump it in, so I don't push it on the stove. It's good. Okay, I'm gonna get rid of these out of your way. So, 
we just got to continually stir this until we reach another rolling boil that can't be stirred down and boil for one minute. And, and only, to, and, and, and it's supposed to be pretty, my dad told me, that's pretty picky. You got to bring it to a boil that you can't stir down and you boil it for one minute. Exactly. So he minute. sets a timer. Now my dad's a little anal. You know what? I'll set one for you. And you just let me know when you get to that boil. And I'll he, start. he is a little anal, but you know, a minute is a minute. Yeah, it doesn't mean look at the clock because you don't know. It might be, you know, 10 seconds. It might be, The you directions know, do say minute exactly 45. one minute. And that may have something to do with the pectin. It probably does. Or, or, or sure gel. Now, I also can't help but wondering, you know, like when, 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 when I was a kid and we were making jelly and we didn't add sure gel, we did, which is fruit pectin. Now, ripe fruit has pectin in it. And the riper the fruit, generally speaking, the more pectin it has in it. And different fruits have different amounts of pectin. But I can't help but wonder, you know, like we made this all out of fresh grapes and some of them were riper than others. So that leads me to believe since all of them weren't 100% ripe, we probably didn't have as much pectin in the juice as we would have had if all of them were, were you know, perfectly ripe. So maybe that's where the sure gel tends to make up that difference. We're, wow. You can see, we are definitely at a boil that cannot be stirred down. Up, oh, off. That would be my dad. Oh, no. No, that was the timer. That's the timer, sorry. That's the timer. So I turned the flame off, and now it says to skim off the foam. Oh. and jar the jelly. Okay, so what we need to do now is we need to wipe the tops. You really want to make sure that you get this, this top ring really good along here, and you want to make sure that you use a clean dishcloth. Not something you've been washing dishes with, not something that's been, not a sponge, been laying on the sink for, you know, a month or so, whatever. So, you want to... Thank you. So you want to make sure that it's clean around the top. And we've got this handy dandy little magnet thing here. And we would have our rings, I mean our lids, heated here in a pot on the stove. I'm going to set that on there. I'm going to grab it. Now if you have tender hands, you might want to wear some gloves or something, but I don't have tender hands. And it's going to go straight into our coal pack. Coal packer, pressure cooker, cold canner, water bath water canner, bath whatever. Canner, yeah. It's all, it's all, it's all the same thing. So, um, we we call them coal packers, coal packer and 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 pressure canner. The well, pressure Those canner is actually a little different, but so we may we may actually use a pressure canner one of these days, and when we can some we some are meat. we are. I'm going to show you guys how to can meat. So anyway, uh, my job, I actually drive truck and haul asphalt, so I'm slow in the winter, but during the summer, it's really, really busy, and I don't have a lot of time for supper. When we get home, you know, summertime, you got the garden coming in, you got grass to mow, you got everything to take care of. So I can meet, not just to preserve it, but it's actually out of convenience. I can actually can pork roast, beef roast, ham, green beans, and new potatoes like we showed you when we were down there in the Shawnee. Um, I can can that. I can can ham and beans, chili, taco meat. There's a whole bunch of things that you can can. And just like pork roast, you can take a can of pork roast and open it up and dump some barbecue sauce in it and have barbecue pork sandwiches. You can take roast beef and you can can it and you can um, cook some potatoes, make some gravy out of the juice that's in your beef. You got supper. It's Yes. You need you need to learn how to can beef. Not, pressure cookers and canners are not anything to be afraid of anymore. Years ago, they were scary. I had one blow up on my great aunt, who lived across the yard, well, right next to my grandma and grandpa, as a matter of fact. 
and it, I was always afraid of them until my mother-in-law showed me how to use them and they're wonderful things to know how to use. And it's, it's you know, when you can your own meat or your own vegetables, it's not unlike, in fact, actually better than the canned vegetables and canned meat and you potatoes, buy at the grocery and store. And potatoes, you can can potatoes. And I'll tell you what, well, you know, the Irish like had the potato famine. So potatoes are pretty important. You can can potatoes and have potatoes for a long time. I mean, they keep a long, long time. I'm gonna need to get you a big ring for that last. Okay, guys, we are seconds away from taking this jelly out of this canner. Leslie's taking a break. She's just a little warm from being here over this hot stove. So, it's been at a boil for five minutes. And we are gonna remove these and set them on a towel to cool. So here we go. Oh, these look nice. Okay, hey, so the grape jelly is done and it's over there cooling. I think you saw that already. So we're gonna get going on the blackberry. We had cooked this down and it's cooled off and we're gonna, can you see that? So that's what we have. Let me zoom in there. Oh yeah. Okay. We're gonna strain this. And I know it looked a little more liquidy before, but everything kind of absorbed the juice. But what we're gonna do is we're just gonna, I'm gonna try not to make a mess here. We're gonna spoon this into the strainer. They make a thing and it's called a, a food mill, I think. And it has a crank, it looks like a pot, and it has a crank and it has like, I don't know, three or four blades on it that runs against the mesh grain. And that would work absolutely awesome for this. I had one of those years ago, and I don't anymore because oh, uh, somebody thought I just didn't need it and threw it out. So you know what we're gonna do. You know our favorite saying, Les. You make do. <laughs> do you know I'm gonna actually do this up here on the counter? Okay. Because I think it would be easier All than right, trying to see me, down in the sink. Let me uh, pan out here. Yeah, we can make this work. So all we're gonna do is we're just gonna start. We don't want to push this over the side, okay? But all we're gonna do is we're gonna start trying to squeeze this through here. And this is gonna take a long time. That's why I said, honestly, if I had that food mill, somebody threw away because they thought I just <laughs> need it. Things would be easier, but and I don't. No, it was not me. No, it was not Gino. So, so we're just gonna keep what we're doing is we're actually just squeezing and we're scraping against the side of that screen. Now when this gets drier, we'll actually scrape a little more. But right now what I'm doing is I'm just trying to squeeze the free juice through there. So let me ask you a question, Leslie. Sure. I, I mean, I, I've made jelly numerous times. Mm -hmm. This is my first syrup adventure. It's not much could, different. Could you, uh, Make in place of this, could you use a cheesecloth? You could, you could, you could, you 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 could you could use a jelly bag, a cheesecloth. We might and actually just, get and just rig it to hang over a pot and let it let it drip. Yeah, I'm gonna be honest with you. I might get tired of doing this, and I might actually end up I might end up squeezing it through a flour sack dish towel. We always use flour sack dish towels like for drying dishes because they're the most awesome thing for drying dishes. They can be wet. And they still dry. Best they, they don't. Dish towel they're made. streak free. There's no lint. They're the most awesome dish towels ever. Almost every but, commercial place uses them as well. But um, we might just actually waste one of those or make it blue. It'll end up blue and then eventually brown. And it'll still um, dry as dishes. it fades. It doesn't but, matter what yeah. color it is. But we might actually do that to get the suit because this was cooked already, and we're actually taking the natural pectin that's in the fruit and it kind of thickened and I'm thinking that it's going to be pretty hard after it cooled and it thickened to get it pushed through here but we were just trying to make things go faster and 
you know what sometimes a little bit of patience would be better but hindsight's always 2020 but we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna make the syrup one way or the other so you're probably gonna see me be getting my hands nasty here in a minute squeezing it through a dish that, towel. that's one thing that's one thing you'll learn if you subscribe and follow this channel Leslie and I are tenacious and we do not give up <laughs> you know you know maybe things don't work out perfect it doesn't matter you, you certainly don't waste what you're doing and throw out what you're doing and just say you know forget it okay so anyway we're still working on getting the rest of the juice out of these blackberries and I haven't given up on the strainer yet it's a little hard but um, no, she we'll actually get it. found a new technique well <laughs> normally you know you're wanting to press it through but um it's kind of thick so we're just kind of stirring it like this kind of like you would with a ricer when you do tomatoes for tomato juice you know with your wooden thing and your, your cone shape deal and you keep running around well that's what we're doing and can you it's, see in there Gino it's, yeah it's yeah. thick but we don't want to thin it down you know and all we need is three cups of juice if you want to if you want to pick that up I'll get a close-up of that stuff in there I mean, that's... Can you see that? Yeah, that's all, I mean, that's, the, all the goodness. I put my spoon in there for you, but it's got, you know, seeds and... All the goodness that the blackberry is willing to yield. So we're just going to go until I'm pretty sure that we got three cups of juice, and we'll be back to make the syrup out of it. Be the best thing you ever had. Okay, so we did some pretty good scraping, and I don't know if I need what, what I didn't get, but I actually have three cups and it's just barely three cups but I've got three cups you know three but three yeah. but there's three there's three cups of juice in here so we're gonna dump this in here make sure you scrape it all out because we're close yeah yeah <laughs> yeah there's 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 no extra for the now honestly this is a hundred percent pure juice squeezed out of the blackberries and you could add water because if you started with fresh blackberries you most likely would have added water to it to get them boiling so you didn't scorch them and these were frozen so we didn't add any water so right. there has been no water introduced to this so you could add water you could add a quarter of a cup probably shoot some people probably tell you a half a cup you know but it is what it is I mean I, I think I think we're definitely you know, we had we had a little better, honestly, than three cups in here. So we're going to call that good. And that is goodness right there. Look at that. It's gonna be awesome syrup. Okay, so we've been boiling here now. Sorry. We've been boiling here now for about two minutes. And we have to boil this for three. So we're bringing you in at the end of it. In this pot, we have our three cups of juice that you saw us get. And we have two and a half cups of sugar. So it's almost equal. <laughs> two and a half cups of sugar, three cups of juice. The reason the reason we didn't let you guys watch all that is because a watch, pot, a watch pot never boils and yeah. we don't have all day. <laughs> That's right. That's right. So then we have measured out um, that we'll go into this. We have to boil this for three minutes. We're getting close. We have measured out four teaspoons of pectin which sure gel is pectin so we just used sure gel and we measured out four teaspoons and we are getting ready to dump this in here and then we have to boil that for exactly one minute uh turn it off interrupt you for one second oh i forgot I i'm thought, sorry I there's also lemon juice in out. here there's also lemon juice thank you gino no, yes it, no it was six teaspoons no or no no it was four six was if we would have had four, four teaspoons Yes, four teaspoons. Four teaspoons. Yes. Okay, I thought okay. you said tablespoons. And we also like, have, and we also have how many uh, teaspoons of lemon juice? Oh, two tablespoons two of lemon tablespoons juice. Two tablespoons of lemon juice. Yes. Yes. So we are ready to dump our pectin tablespoon in here. Tablespoon was stuck let in me, my brain for some reason. Let me, I'm like, let Wait me get a, a timer ready to set for a minute because this this is what once you add your pectin, that is pretty pretty. There it is, all measured out for so you. So we're gonna Perfecto. mix this up in here. Oh man. Okay, and we're going to hit start, and we are going to cook this for exactly one minute. We're going to turn it off, and according to making syrup with pectin, we should have syrup, which will be way faster than how I do it, where I just cook it down until the juice, the sugar gets yeah. thick, and you know. And hey, I, this is just me. Of course, I'm a guy, right? But... 
having that stuff pre-measured out, all your dry ingredients pre-measured out in, in little bowls, saves so much time when you're making something. If you it's sit a, down it, and do all that, you It know. takes away your chance for error. Yes. Which is big. So we got uh, 10 seconds. 10 seconds to go. We're going to shut this off. We'll get our jars out. We're going to ladle it into our jars and we're going to get ready to process it in the cold packer. Okay, so we're going to ladle our hot syrup into our jars. And once again, we're using half pints. Just because once it's open, it's not going to keep. So I tend to try to keep things small unless I know it's something that's going to be used. And I'm saying hot syrup. The heck with a jar. Give me a pancake. <laughs> I'll tell you what, it's pretty good on biscuits too. You got a fresh one of those fresh biscuits and put a little butter on it. It's pretty good. That would help if I got some lids, huh? Or some well, rings, I would, mean. rings, I mean. Yeah, rings would definitely help. I got a drip there on the counter. You don't know. Yeah, get it. There you go. So we are going to um, do the same process here. We're filling the jars, wiping the rings, putting the lid, and, and the ring bands. Some people call them bands. We always call them rings. Onto the jar, just finger tight. Not, you know, we're not looking to win any strength contests or anything so just tighten them down and put them in the cold packer i'm a little shy on that one put them in the cold packer and we're going to process them for the same amount of time okay so we are done um all except for the taste test so we yep this is not <laughs> a pioneer baking mix buttermilk biscuit Busted. <laughs> it's not even nearly as tasty as one. However, we didn't have any mix. See, we've just been using too much of it. So we got True. we got the Pillsbury Grands. It's true. It's okay. We're not here to taste biscuits. We're here to taste jelly and, right, right. and, and syrup. Yeah. Now I'm gonna tell you, I'll be the first to admit when something doesn't go right and life is just not perfect. So my blackberry syrup is blackberry jelly. See that there? Oh yeah. Which it's is blackberry jelly. Which is fine. Which is fine because now we can use it as jelly or what we can do is we can take this and we can heat it up with a little bit of water in a pot on the stove and then dump it into a jar and put it in the refrigerator and you will have blackberry syrup. So it's not like it's a total disaster or anything. Now you can have syrup or you can have jelly. So that's actually a good thing. But the reason why this happened is because fruit, when fruits get really ripe, they have more pectin in them and my blackberries were super ripe so we had a lot of natural pectin in the blackberry juice to begin with and then we added the sure gel pectin and i like i said i'm new to this sure gel thing this adding pectin i usually just cook it until it's right but it doesn't matter now we got both so it's a good thing so so, so yeah the bad news is the blackberry syrup is blackberry jelly the good news is the grape jelly is not grape syrup. <laughs> That's exactly right. That's the right. good news. <laughs> so we are going to have a little tasty tester here. And I guess I'll let Gino try the grape and I'll try the blackberry. And then we'll flip flop. And I'm sorry, I know we're here to try jelly, but I gotta have butter. Like I said earlier, I don't want butter in the jelly. I want it under the jelly. Yeah, that's exactly right. So we're going to see how we did. And I'm not, I'm not disappointed, honestly, that it turned out as jelly instead of, instead of syrup. Because, like I said, I can make syrup out of jelly. So it's actually a good thing. I mean, now, now if you know, we want to have jelly on crackers or toast or an English muffin, jelly is awesome on English muffin. Oh, yes. So we but can look have at, it look at that way. Look at that grape jelly. Look yeah, at, look yeah. At that. And, and look, the blackberry, look. look it's... <laughs> It's about the same. I don't know if you can see that. I think I've that, got that in the way. That is like as as good a jelly, better jelly than you'll ever buy at the store. So, 
that's a blackberry. It looks pretty yummy. Yes, it does. Okay, let's go have our taste. And that is the grape, and it looks amazing too. Okay, you go first, Gino, or you want me to? Go ahead. Okay, so not used to doing this, but. Oh, that's good. That's good. Good? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This is going to be. You could, honestly, you could use this just like it is on um, pancakes. I mean, really, I'd like it thinned down a little bit just because I like it to soak in, but this would be unbelievable on an English muffin. How's great? We're about to find out. Oh, man. Good? Look, Welch's, I consider Welch's to be really good grape jelly. This blows Welch's away. And this is Boy. not, this is a first year, we always make it out of Concord grapes. Or there was another one that we used to use, I can't remember what it was. My Uncle Benny Groom, it was something different. Yeah, I don't remember. They were grapes that we used to make wine out of. Um, I don't remember what they were, but these are actually Norton grapes. And they're a little itty bitty. They're not, they're a little bit bigger than an elderberry. They're more mm -hmm. like the size of a pokeberry, which is poisonous, but um, they're small grapes, but the flavor is unbelievable. Unbelievable, incredible. Definitely. Well, hey, here's to you guys. So we'll see you next time. And maybe next time we'll have some homemade butter. Yeah, thanks for watching guys. Give us a thumbs up, it helps the channel. Appreciate you stopping by and we'll catch you next time. Y'all take care.